Can you hear me? <laughs> oh, what's up? There you are. <laughs> Holy cow. Uh, all, right. all right. Hold on. <laughs> all right. Just want to, I need to inform you of the proper social etiquette real quick. Um, no, I, I know you know this, but just to go over it a little bit, no, no vulgarity, no racial slurs, no personal information. Uh, I think you, you get the general idea, right? Yes. Okay, great. What is going on? With me? Yeah, you're talking right now. So everybody that joins this space right now can hear us talking to each other. Outstanding. All right. Yeah. Um, like I, like you said, this is no. all new to me. Oh, God. Well, oh, sorry. Sorry. Um, there's not a lot of people here right now. So what's going to happen is that different people are going to come in, hopefully, if they're, if they're uh, coming from my Telegram chat. And I'm going to, uh, like, invite other people if I see them come in that I know. And then everybody's going to talk to each other. So you're going to have a chance to talk to a few people. Like one of my friends that I've known for like five years in this Groyper stuff has, uh, is going to come on in like 10 minutes. So, okay. so it's going to be uh, like, you could talk a normal conversation. It doesn't have to be about politics or anything like that. Everybody just wants to kind of get to know us. Okay. Um, so, uh, I guess we're going to wait until about two fifteen to really start, I guess. But, uh, if you want to say anything before then, right now, but there's not that many people listening, so. No, what what time is it now? It's, it's 11 o'clock here, so what is, what is it, 2 there? Uh, you got 15 it's minutes? It's 2.05, so we got until about 2.15. All right, we're gonna, I'm going to go for a walk, so I can bring this with me. I think you should stay on. It shouldn't be a problem. All right, no problem. If you don't uh, answer, I'll text you. You could see, see where it says Mike is on, Mike is off or whatever? Yes. Yes, okay. So, h hello, listen. Should I, should, okay, I, should, should I turn it off for now? Who is this? This random account. Hold on, I got to see this random account real quick. Three followers? Yeah, get blocked. Who are you, bro? Random, random account with three followers, no profile picture. He's followed by Dark Smoke, though. Um, he's retweeting Nick stuff, but that could be a PSYOP. That could be a Hasbara PSYOP where he's trying to infiltrate my Twitter spaces. I don't know. We'll see. All right. Um, all right. Let's see. I'm just going to invite everybody to speak. Um, so since there's already a couple of people here. All right. I don't know. I invited everybody that's in here to speak. So anybody who wants to ask me anything or question or whatever. But when, uh, when Meatball Griper gets in here. Uh, okay. Whoa. Uh, 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 Dad, are you still there? Yeah. Uh, I'm, I, this is going to be, I'm going to do this for like uh, probably an hour or two. So you can do whatever you want to do. And then when you want to come in, just let me know. Okay, I'm going to leave it on as much as I can now. I'm going to get in the car. We're going for a walk, but I'll listen, and I'll talk if I can. All right. All right, I invited everybody to speak, so anybody who wants to speak can unmute their mic and talk. <laughs> I didn't start yet. Okay. My dad is in the space, yes indeed. His name is Mr. Wright. Oh, that, 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 that is, that, that's, sure, that's grand, isn't it? Quite grand, young lad. Are you an Irish bloke? I am, in, I am indeed good, sir. My, uh, much, much, much like your father. Uh, yes, but we also always have to keep in mind that no matter what our ethnic deficiencies are, Christ still loves us. Indeed, indeed. Christ loves blacks as much as white. Well, I mean, I, 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 Irish are technically black, so it's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, do I know you from uh, Instagram? I mean, not Instagram. So, uh, Dad, when you're Dad, when you're not speaking, you have to mute your mic. <laughs> Father, whom I love, please. <laughs> oh, jeez. I got it. Oh, this is awesome. This is this is the type of content we want. <laughs> All right. There we go. Thank you. Okay, very good. All right, who else was in here? Okay, Irish person. Uh, okay, if anybody, I don't know. I, this is the first time I ever did a Twitter space, so I don't really know how everything works. But um, 
yeah, anybody who wants to speak is, can unmute their mic or raise questions, raise hands and answer questions. But basically what I wanted to discuss, I guess, was basically my, um, psychological, <laughs> uh, self, um, analysis that I've been doing, I guess, because I was looking into like all the different symptoms I have because I've been doing some self reflection lately. I call it spexo analysis. And, uh, I've come to realize that I'm not such a bad guy, which is very nice to know. So I'm going to keep being open and honest about myself and with other people in every social interaction that I get in, because I think that, uh, is a good quality to have because, um, I think I've been so nervous of different social interactions due to the fact that I felt like my beliefs were so crazy and insane, but it just took me lurking in the shadows for a very long time to properly articulate my feelings and my no homo, uh, <laughs> properly articulate like my sentimental, like feelings of like things that I haven't even addressed because I focus on like taking care of everybody else except me. And I know that sounds like a humble brag or something, but it's not, I have a very, uh, fulfilled life with a lot of responsibilities because I'm like a grown up now. I'm like 31 years old. I'm going to be in a nursing home soon. And, uh, it's okay. But I also realized that, uh, I think I'm hyperactive or manic depressive or something along those lines. I'm self-diagnosed because I'll never go to a, you know, psychologist because that's Jewish nonsense. But besides that, um, yeah, everything is going really well. This is one of the happiest moments in my life. And it's not just because Nick is unbanned from Twitter. Nick's unbanning from Twitter was like planting a seed in my heart. He planted his seed in me, uh, <laughs> because, um, I feel like once he was unbanned from Twitter and I started being more open and active on Twitter, I realized that I actually do know how to articulate my feelings well. And that has extended into all social interactions that I've been having lately, which is a phenomenal feeling because it's nice to know who you are and have the emotional maturity to acknowledge your quirks and the things that are potentially character defects, but still be okay with them. Be able to discern which ones are the negative ones, which ones are the positive ones and things of that nature. I think it's good to have some sense of reflection and look back on past relationships in your life and realize how thinking back in hindsight, that might have affected certain behavioral characteristics that you had. <clears throat> like I was thinking about <laughs> this ex-girlfriend who was a horrible person, you know, may Christ lighten her heart, but she was just a very, very bad person. And uh, I also disavow any type of out of wedlock uh, mouth kissing. Gross. But anyway, I was a degenerate before. This is before Christ, BC, before Christ. Um, so this, oh no, my kids. All right, I got to go down to the basement. Hold on. All right, listen, guys, guys, what? Daddy's going to go in the basement and talk to some of his friends, okay? So please don't come down there, okay? I'm going to have a discussion about Jesus, okay? okay. Just talk about Jesus and tell people how much I love Jesus, okay? okay. All right, love you. Bye. Bye. All right. Oh, goodness gracious. All right. Sorry about that. It's freaking can't control these women. It's freaking, <laughs> freaking females always want to be in my business asking me what, I, what, I'm, what I'm doing. What are you doing? What exactly? What are you doing, bro? What am I doing? I'm your father. You don't talk to men like that. You don't speak at a turn, woman. Oh, I'm going to have to beat the hell out of him later. <laughs> anyway, uh, so yeah, I was discussing that I dated this uh, silly goose whore lady for a very long time, and it was not a nice experience because she abused me. And I was also a suck. Uh, <laughs> I was also a sucker idolizing. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to say this in a non-offensive uh, way. Sucker idolizing mediocre mm, pantyhose. There we go. So I was a sucker idolizing uh, mediocre pantyhose. And uh, she did horrible stuff to me that I put up with and, like, moved past. And, like, um, you know, like, I just looked past it because I genuinely thought that I loved her. And so when I genu genuinely thought I loved her, I made her my entire world. And I remember I would do gay, simpy stuff for her. Like, um, I bought her, like, flowers one time just to be, like, a nice boyfriend, like a real faggot. <laughs> And, uh, uh, so I did that. So I got, uh, 
I got uh, flowers for her and I brought them back to her. And instead of saying like, oh, thank you, she was like, um, oh, let me guess. What'd you get these at CVS? Right. And then she was like, I'm just kidding. It's a very nice thought. And like, I was like, wow, this girl just doesn't appreciate anything I do for her. I went out of my way to get her something that I didn't have to do. And she was just like, <laughs> yeah, like, oh, what'd you get these at CVS? Like, how about the fact that I went out of my way to like, think of you getting you something one time. And I was poor at this time. Like I was just out of dropping out of college because of my drug addiction. And, uh, I was just getting clean or whatever. And, uh, like she was my first relationship off out of like my super duper degenerate lifestyle. And, um, like, so I just like dedicated everything to her and she did not, well, she was not in the same, uh, I guess, growth process. She wasn't in her growth process, right? Spexo analysis. She wasn't in her proper growth, growth, um, process and didn't have the, emotional female fortitude um i mean emotional fortitude due to being a female because females have silly goose nonsense like biological whatever so she had all these crazy hormones going on plus she was also a degenerate drug addict so that was just a match made in heaven from the start but regardless all of these horrible uh qualities that this whore person <laughs> who i hope found christ uh is um was showing to me i feel as though I, I use them, even though I learned, I learned from them and I knew what I wanted to find in a girl after that, because I knew how I didn't want a person to treat me in a relationship. I knew that I wanted a person to be grateful, which I found because my wife now, the first date we went, not the first date, but like we weren't gone, gone on a couple of dates or whatever. And once I realized that I actually genuinely liked this girl and was willing to try to pursue a relationship again, I, um, brought her uh, a Pandora bracelet, which was like nothing. It was 70 bucks. I was kind of rich by then. And, uh, I, um, like, I, it was like it was 70 bucks. I gave her, I gave her the thing and she was through the moon. She showed such like appreciation and gratitude. She just kept thanking me and was like so surprised. And I was like, wow, like I get this girl a Pandora bracelet and she's just like super grateful. And that also stems from her culture of being from a barbaric land known as Brazil, the white part though, which is good. Um, but, uh, I also, um, think that, uh, what was I trying to say? So yeah, so this other girl, but it basically made me know who I wanted in a, in a life partner essentially, which is good, but it also affected my relationship with my wife because now because of any time I tried to show feelings to this other girl and be a good guy to her, I like would be afraid that she wasn't going to be grateful for it. So that like internally made me self-conscious and other social act interactions where I don't fully open up to other people and myself and stuff. And like, I was thinking back on it. Like when I met my wife, I was fully able to be myself and open up and she thought I was funny and she liked me and all that gay stuff or whatever. And she was willing to procreate with me. And now I own her. So that's good. So um, the point I guess I'm trying to make is that you learn from different experiences, I guess. And like my dad, who I'm sure will tell you later, he was in this like drug program forever. And he has like the obsessive compulsiveness that I do. And I get super obsessed with like, it's like man, it's uh, that's why I keep saying that I'm manic depressive because like I have these crazy obsessions and when I'm when I'm into something, I am into it like a hundred percent. There's no like there's no moderation, which I guess also goes back to my drug addiction, not having moderation when I was consuming chemical substance. And so the, the point I'm trying to make is that all these little changes and aspects and stuff like that, you don't notice until in hindsight that are really inflection moments in your life where you realize how previous relationships and previous interactions with people have a so have basically created your behavioral conditions and patterns over the next like 10 years of your life. Right. And I know this sounds like gay Jewish psychoanalysis, but it really isn't. It's just, it's just in reflection and self-awareness and stuff like that. And then self-awareness and knowing that you have these quirks and you have all this stuff going on, it makes you really, um, understand that like not everybody has the same growth process as you. Not everybody is where you are. And that goes from people being red pilled about Nick Fuentes, people, um, you know, all these new fags that have no idea what social decorum is and like the vernacular that Groypers use and need to lurk for seven years in the shadow before they actually start making retarded posts on Twitter, counter signaling Groypers that have been here for seven years and acting like they're more pious than me because they don't post pictures of a 
black girl that's supposed to represent Candace Owens. See how hyperactive I am? I could just do that like in like a split second, which is also a talent. I also have good quirks. I have good qualities. I'm not stupid. I'm actually pretty intelligent. I speak at a higher uh, vernacular level than most people. And I got to, I got to be, I got to give myself more credit than I actually give my cre- myself. I got to stop living in self hatred. Um, and these are all Catholic principles. I just didn't know they were Catholic principles until I had this inflection point. So I actually have a lot of built up knowledge throughout my life experiences that I didn't even know I have until I really sat down and really started to overanalyze and think about my past life. And I feel like that has finally got me to a point in my life in every aspect, not just on Twitter, which all this culminating effects have had like an enormous impact on me and who I am. But it's not just that. That one little thing of Nick getting banned on Twitter created this chain reaction to having this spiritual awakening. I also talked about how I saw the, um, like the, uh, the kids saying about, uh, church and stuff like that. When I went to church and when I went to mass and the children were singing, they will know we are Christians by our love. And that sparked something in me because it was after an argument that I got into with my wife about going to church. And once again, I was, I was overbearing on her with my religious zeal. I have to accept that my wife is not as religiously zealous as me. She does not understand every day of holy obligation or the feasts or anything like that. But the reason that she became Catholic in the first place was because when I started obsessing about Catholicism, it changed how I was acting immediately. And she immediately noticed that and saw that this was something good that I was doing. And she wanted to have that feeling that I have. So that then goes all the way back to... uh this we're doing like quentin tarantino like backup stories here now that all goes all the way back to being myself as well as they will know we are christians by our love because all i have to do is be my kind-hearted self and not worry about what other people think of me and accept and embrace my quirkiness and the way i speak and my hyperactiveness and all this stuff and not be embarrassed by it and not worry about how people perceive me all i have to do is that and then people are attracted to me And when I realize that and I open up, like I've been working with like all over the city and stuff, right? Because I drive trucks and stuff, right? So I, uh, I go to like, um, upstate New York to Jersey, all these stuff. So I'm interacting with all these different people and, uh, which I really haven't done before. I'm really very quiet, you know, because I keep to myself because I was so afraid of what people would think of me. But over the past two weeks, I've been talking to literally everybody. And what I've come to realize is that when people get to know me, they actually genuinely, genuinely like me. And also that self-consciousness comes from a bad relationship I had with somebody who I thought was my best friend who betrayed me over a girl who I wanted to break his face. But then I ended up fighting some other guy who betrayed me over a girl. So I literally the point I'm trying to make is women are the root of all evil. If that wasn't clear to put it concise, (laughs) to put it concisely is that. (laughs) Oh, ex speaker. Oh, no, I think that's my wife. No, no, she's not. She's upstairs taking care of the kids. Who could this be? Who could this be? This has to be, that has to be my stepmom, I think. <laughs> hold on. Oh, wait, hold on. Oh, let me check my texts. Oh, okay. Oh, it's not even who I thought it was. Oh, okay. All right. Anyway. Um, <laughs> anyway, no, I'm kidding. Uh, women are uh, okay in certain circumstances, like fe- females that you love, right? And you want to talk about like women, um, you want to talk about women in general and how the whole incel thing comes, right? When you speak on Twitter and you, when you talk to your friends, you obviously have a certain social etiquette and decorum that you follow. Friends have their own vernacular. Friends have their own special words that they use that only they know what that means because they've been around each other so long and they know what kind of terminology they use. They know what kind of sense of humor they have. They know what kind of jokes that each other have. So, um, these new fags who are coming in with groypers and stuff like that, and especially the women who are getting, you know, red pilled by Nick Fuentes and being first indoctrinated into these like dissident ideas. The, uh, what really is going on is that they don't have the same experience that we do. They have not been around this that long. They don't know what we mean by rape, kill, die for Nick J. Fuentes. They don't know that we don't literally unironically mean like forced naughty behaviors, right? Like that's not good. God doesn't want us to do that. I mean, if the Pope ordered me to do that, I would have to because he's the Pope and I can't disrespect the Pope. Like it's out of my hands at that point. But unless the Pope directly orders me to rape somebody, I'm not going to rape somebody, you know, like I'm not going to do that. But what we're trying to do is display the general like 
foundation of America first, which is loyalty. And loyalty is a principle that uh, is found in friendship. And friendship is one of the most important things, according to Jesus, because he said, love one another, love your friends, and everybody should be your friend, even if you don't like the things they do, even if you don't like their quirks, even if you don't like the stupid patterns they have and you don't enjoy their presence. Anytime you have a social interaction with them, you should still treat them kindly and with respect and be honest and open if they if they want to talk to you. If they don't want it, and as long as you know how to articulate yourself properly. If you're like me and suffer from like hypermania where you can't keep thoughts together and stuff like that, it took me seven years to be able to properly articulate myself. Basically, I'm learning. Unless I, but then again, I don't know if I was always able to articulate myself or if I was just keeping myself back or what it is. But I don't know. I'm liking the new spec, so I'm liking the new me. I'm very, uh, very happy with everything that's going on in my life and on Twitter and everything. Um, my family is beautiful. I have a great relationship with my dad. My beautiful stepmother is still with us. Thank God. She is, um, she's like my second mother to me. And, uh, she, I didn't think she was going to be here this long. I really didn't. I was very, uh, I thought the last time that I saw her in Vegas was going to be the last time that I was ever going to see her. And it's, uh, five months later and, uh, she's still with me. And, uh, hopefully she, God willing, she lives for many more years and she stays in my life for a very long time. And I ask everybody that's listening, if they could please say a prayer for her, I would greatly appreciate that. Uh, the relationship with my wife has greatly, uh, shifted because, um, what I'm doing now is that like, I'm being willing to be more open to me. Like I've realized that my wife probably likes me after seven years and uh, she probably like is like friendly with me enough to the point where she like she she did make three kids for me, which I got to uh, also put into the equation. And she has lived with me for literally over seven years. So I'm pretty sure she knows my daily habits and stuff like that. So she's saying that it's good that I'm like talking more to her because I guess females like talking. So you also have to remember that that talking is a, a feminine quality. So you guys have to monitor your um, your speech, right? You have to always be you have to always be adapting to each social circumstance, right? Which these new fags don't understand. These new fags think that we're going out in public and saying rape people. Yeah, rape people. No, we're going out in public and we're saying Christ is king and to support Nick Fuentes and we love America and stuff like that. And we love Trump and we love Candace Owens and we love all these people who are pushing against this institutionalized anti-Christian power. So that is like legit. Um, my point of view, I guess. I know I was, I was, I had a different point, but my uh, ADHD or hyperactivity or whatever, whatever you want to call it, it, um, is not allowing me to properly uh, articulate myself. So I would like to hear from any of you guys, um, my dad or anybody who I didn't invite to speak. Let's see, uh, invite to speak person, invite to speak person, invite to speak person. You don't have to speak if you want to, but this is like an open forum. If anybody has any questions or any wants to hear my perspective on anything, um, just let me know and uh, unmute your mic. I have unmuted everybody that is in here. Uh, well, I've invited everybody that's in here to speak. So, yeah, waiting on you guys. Father, if you have any words. He doesn't know how to, like, unmute his mic, I don't think. I suppose I'll there's, there's, chime there's, in for just the, a moment. Uh, <laughs> there's the uh irish lad what's up go ahead that's right uh, i suppose like, i won't say too much in case someone else wants to pop in but uh i suppose you're right that uh there is a balance to be struck here isn't there like um self-reflection doesn't always as you said have to be some kind of gay jewish kind of psychoanalysis type thing it can just be kind of just kind of an awareness of your habits and your quirks and the proclivities you have as an individual and working around those within obviously a Catholic moral framework. Uh, sort of how, how do you live and how do you proceed, uh, in a manner with which your sort of quirks, your proclivities, your, your inclinations do the mm -hmm. least damage to, to your life? relationships in your life so i think in that regard uh self-reflection is indeed a positive thing and i myself have been going through a lot of that as of recently uh so you know I, i'm in a similar similar sort of boat of you a, a bit a bit earlier of course because i i still there's a lot i mm -hmm. just don't know yeah, about so, you know, I'm 
get that. Okay. Any, uh, yeah. So any questions you have, I'll be grateful to answer. But the one thing that I want to say, uh, about that is that absolutely self reflection is like imperative. It's like you need self reflection. You need to be self aware in order to properly conduct yourself in all aspects of your life. You need social awareness. You need to maintain social poise. That's a lesson that I learned when I was in my fraternity. Maintain social decorum and social poise in all aspects of your life. And my dad, when I used to hear him speak at all these drug meetings, trying to get these like drug addicts at rehabs and stuff to get clean, he would always say things, he would basically give the lesson of like the Pharisees to these people without knowing he was giving the lesson of the Pharisees. And he would say, oh, oh there's, there's people who can recite all of these passages from uh, the basic text, which is like the big book of his program or whatever, from the basic text and the Just for Today and all of these different inspirational quotes and stuff like that. And they know all this good stuff and what paragraph is what, but how are they living? How are they living their life? How are they treating people? How are they doing? Right. And like, I didn't even think of that until recently that like it just sparked a thing in my life. Like that's the, oh, that's the Christian principle of charity. Always treat people with kindness. The thing that we're, that we've been taught since we were little kids, do unto others as you would have done unto you. Right. But like sometimes it doesn't click in certain ways that it's supposed to. It's more complex than you think. It's supposed to, you know, uh, I guess, you know, it's supposed to, uh, you know what I'm trying to say, but go on. Oh, all right. Yeah. And I mean, uh, the areas with which you struggle, uh, can tell you a lot about yourself. Like, I know for a fact that I have a, that I struggle with hatred mm -hmm. and resentment, but also forgive people quite easily, which is quite, uh, I don't know, maybe more people have this than I realize, but th that inclination where, where it's like, that inclination to kind of hate people, even people who haven't done anything wrong to me, is something I really need to work on. And I guess, I, I, and, and again, not to stray into any kind of psychoanalysis, but I, I do think it, you know, it, it would have a lot to do with the fact that like I'm not entirely happy with myself. And, uh, which is not to say that we should all be entirely happy with ourselves because we are all sinners. Mm -hmm. We are all flawed. But uh, I suppose it's just recognizing what in particular right. do we struggle with. Uh, and, uh, there's no, there's no shame in admitting that, especially, especially not in the confessional. Um, and I remember you, you were talking about girls and, and stuff in the, in the past that you've had experiences with, uh, and, and that you've some, like for a long time struggled to, sorry, I, I don't want to paraphrase anything, but like, I'm just saying I've been in a similar, but like, I remember my first confession where I think the final bit of it was, a uh, that the priest was saying, and you know, finally, is, is there anyone, any grudges you have or any that you have against people? Any of those now, you need to let them go. You need to forgive people. And if you can remember their names, you, and I, I, I forget, I, I, it, for me, it was just a list. It was a bunch of girls, just a list of girls names. <laughs> that I was like, I, 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 you know, that I, and, and that was, uh, I mean, it, it was, it was a bit, but I like, it, it was slightly embarrassing at first, but, uh, at the end of it, you know, I, I did feel like, uh, I'd been able to, to leave something behind, like, uh, get something off my shoulders because uh you can't you can't really yeah, look like that yeah like i was saying sometimes yeah. you don't even know what the experiences that you've had in the past uh how they're going to affect you in the future so literally every moment that you experience in life could be something that changes you forever in the future that you don't even realize about it and once you hit emotional maturity you start to realize that like it's okay to to to, to like dissect certain tragic stuff you know, and I think I did it on the best case scenario because I had such a strong Catholic framework over the past five or six years, whatever it's been, that uh, once I finally reached that inflection point, I was able to use the things I learned through Catholicism to apply it to my uh, self-reflection. And because I was able to do that in an emotionally mature way, I was able to also think back on all the things, stuff like my dad taught me when I was a kid which shows that you really don't know how much of an impact your parents are going to have on you until like you're really fully grown, you know? And as for you were saying about girls or whatever you're going through, like you don't have to make the same mistakes I did. That's why it's good to, for people to open up about their experiences, because if you open up about your experiences, other people can see different perspectives that they might not have thought of. Right. It's all about seeing different things from different perspectives. Right. So you're probably in your twenties or something like that. 
that was how old I was 10 years ago when I was going through all this stuff, right? And I was just a total simp, right? Just any girl that basically gave me attention. Not, no, I won't say that because I always was able to get girls. But like, if I liked a girl, like the girls that I didn't care about that I just wanted to use as, you know, biological naughty machines, right? Like those types of girls, I, uh, like comfort girls, we'll call them, right? The, the comfort girls, I just didn't really care about, right? Like I would treat them horribly. And if they didn't want to perform comfort, I would kick them out of my immediate area. So once I ever found a girl that I really liked who I, I really liked and was like, oh, I want to be this guy, this girl's boyfriend or whatever, then I would be like, uh, you know, like, oh, I love this girl so much. Like, she's the one, like, like you don't understand. No, like she's different. Like I can save her, bro. Like, like, you don't, you don't see how we are when we're like alone, like, when we're alone, it's, like, so different, bro. Like, I know she's crazy, and I know you've seen her hit me and have bipolar mood swings and all this stuff, but you just don't get it, bro. I love her. Like, I was in that mindset, right? Which is not a good mindset to be in. Um, <laughs> so doing that, uh, basically what I'm trying to say is that you could learn from my experience and other people's experiences on what you want in a relationship and what you want in true love, right? Like, you, if you're following Nick Fuentes and you're reading about Catholic stuff, which I'm sure you're doing if you're in this space – then you're already way ahead of the game. You're already way ahead of, of 99.999% of the population, you know? The fact that you're learning all of this stuff and hopefully you're able to actually uh, digest it properly, I think that, like, you're in, like, a good position and you should give yourself more credit for being open-minded to new ideas and trying to apply those principles to your own life. So that's a very good quality to have, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and... and uh... I guess the last thing I was, I would say is, uh, I don't want to hog yeah, this space or anything. So, but, uh, uh, let me explain again, because now that more people are in here, I guess, uh, this is an open forum. That's why I'm inviting everybody to speak. If anybody wants to speak, just unmute your mic. Or if I didn't invite you, I don't know. I, this is my first space. So I don't know what you have to do, but, uh, just, uh, invite to speak. Um, yes, yeah, so this is a open forum, blah, blah. blah. So go on. What, what else do you want to say? Irish person? Yeah, I mean, uh, the last thing I was going to say, at least for now, I might pop, might pop in later, is that, uh, and uh, is that, again, it doesn't have to be a kind of a, a, a diagnosis of anything. It doesn't have to be sort of a, this idea that you have like a mental or chemical imbalance. It's, I think it's, it really is as simple as admitting you're a sinner and, uh, admitting that uh, some sinners, we're all equally culpable, but we sin in a manner that it is different to one another. We have different proclivities and inclinations, but and we also have different experience. But that those are things we can identify that work in our lives and influence us. And it doesn't have to be some kind of psycho babble uh, or kind of a medical chemical diagnosis of anything. It's it is really like it is really actually pretty tangible stuff. That you can identify, and I, I think pe- that mo- more people, most people, realize that it doesn't have to be that complicated. Uh, as I hope you and, to a lesser extent, I have yeah, you know, shown. We here. all have sexual vices. Like, we all have uh, intrusive thoughts, right? I also that's another thing that I'll mention too. I also learned that my intrusive thoughts. Uh, obviously I believe it's all Satan and demons trying to like mind rape me or something like that. But what I think it actually is uh, too, as well besides the demon stuff is that it was manifest the, the the demons i guess were manifestations of my low self esteem trying to tell me uh like all this stuff so i remember not to throw you under the bus dad i love you very much and I, you you are a great dad and stuff like that but i remember one time when we were kids we were watching uh fox news and john Kerry was speaking about something like that or whatever and they said something about gay people and i didn't know what gay was or something like that or i knew that like it meant like oh a, a boy marries a boy or something like that but i didn't know that it was what it is <laughs> <laughs> i didn't know what it was right i didn't know what th- i didn't know people did that as louis ck said right but um gross uh anyway um so he said something like oh uh this uh, well it's a, it's a gay guy or something like that like they talked about gays like as whatever and and my dad said something like oh who cares about the stupid gays or something like that or whatever they have nothing to do like something like uh r- like uh, boomer tier homophobia or whatever right so he said something like that and i said why what's wrong with gay people and he said nothing as long as they're not around me and i said what you don't like gay people right and uh he said uh something like um 
no, I do. I, uh, what, I, what's it called? I like them. I just don't want to be around them. And you know, blah, blah. And I was like, well, what if I was gay? And then he was like, um, uh, what do you say? He said, oh, I would love you, but from a distance or something like that. Like he made a joke, but I didn't understand what gay meant. So then I go into school in like, I guess, middle school or something. Right. And everybody's calling each other gay. So now I'm like, wow, my dad doesn't like these gay people. My, and like nobody in middle school is gay in, in my time. I'm a millennial. So in my time, nobody in high school had like, I mean, nobody in middle school had bleached green hair and was calling each other like tranny names or whatever. So like, I didn't, I, I was like, wow, everybody hates gays. So that manifested in me like fearing that I was going to grow up to be gay or something like that. You know, and like I was I was always worried, like people have to know that I can ha I can get with girls. People have to know that I can always have a girlfriend and stuff like that, because th then they might think I'm gay and they don't like gay people, just like my dad doesn't like gay people. Right. And stuff like that. But it was because I didn't have that growth experience to really understand what was being taught to me. And then that goes back to other traumatic events with my babysitter and all that crazy stuff when she showed me her boobs and all that stuff or whatever, like that, that totally warped my sense of what sex is and what love is and stuff like that. And I didn't realize that it had that all these effects until I was like older. I didn't understand what sex was. I didn't understand what gay, what a gay person was. And because I didn't have the, like these things explained to me and drawn out to me as a child, they continued to manifest into these things of like low self-esteem and self-consciousness and stuff like that. So I think that's the case. My boy Pine Sap is here. Oh my goodness, long time no see. Pinesap, you are in a Twitter space with Spexo and his father. Let's go. Wait, I want you guys to like talk because my dad knows all about you. I talk about you all the time to him, so I want you guys to like to interact. Hello? Hello? Dad? Okay, my dad doesn't know how to use Twitter spaces apparently. Uh, <laughs> what's up, Pinesap? Hey buddy, what's How you up? Doing? I'm doing good. I'm just chilling. Are I've you been, a priest uh, yet? I've been, uh, I I am not. Yeah. Bro, why? <laughs> not what, what, what is your problem, bro? What like are you having like sexual frustration or something like that? Like are you afraid to like I don't know what, what's what's going on? Talk to me. Talk to talk to Doctor Spexo. Okay, we're doing Spexo analysis. What would you like to discuss? <laughs> Dude, I gotta. I I'm I'm trying to find a job right now. I I gotta. <coughs> oh, I don't sorry, I was throwing up. Go ahead. What? You're going to the workforce. <laughs> oh, Your saying... job is to spread the word of Christ. You selfish prick. Now, what, what's, what are you doing? <laughs> um, I'm just trying to find like a, a bunch of different marketing jobs right now. Um, I, I'm like applying to like three or two a day. So I've just been grinding on that. <laughs> That's based. Uh, yeah, and you'd be very good at marketing because you know how to market the faith. So maybe you could market stuff that isn't the faith from a faith based perspective. And then you can use that to be a priest and stop like pretending you're not going to be a priest. <laughs> <laughs> I I Who love you? that's uh I, I think that's a pretty solid plan, honestly. What? You know, I um I, I don't know. Maybe if God calls me to it, I'm open to it. Dope. So what are uh give me some uh some hot hot, hot pine sap teeth uh hot pine sap takes HPTs. Give me an HPT on your whole uh how you like the new Spexo, how you're feeling about Nick being unbanned. I don't know if you did your little personal streams that you do all the time, but you can never, for some reason, organize a stream with me. So uh, tell me <laughs> tell me about your feelings about this stuff. Well, hey, are we can now do Logos Triumphant since my schedule is a lot more uh, opened up. I, I keep forgetting to I just text you and stuff like that, but I would be yeah, down. You have my personal phone number. You are You are my literal spiritual advisor. So don't act like you don't know me. You can text me anytime you want. You got a buddy. Um, yeah, but that's that that uh, will definitely be happening. And then like Nick returning to Twitter has been awesome because I mean, this app sucks without him, to be honest. Right? Like people have like garbage takes people, you know, like they're self they're, they're get, self censorious. Yeah, well, I mean, we, we all start acting bad, you know, like we 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 need him on this app to kind of like rein us in and stuff. Like Absolutely. That. It's really like when we're not you know, when we don't have him on this app, he kind of like adds a lot of balance mm -hmm. to just the like lack of equilibrium on Twitter. Cause you, I, I mean, you have people who just post literally the most like garbage things in the world, like stuff that like you, you question, you're like, why did you wake up this morning and think that that was like something good to post? Mm -hmm. You know what yeah, I mean? A hundred percent. And like, 
And, and you're right. It's all about balance because then you have the new fags piety spiraling and they're saying things like, oh, well, you're really supporting this Catholic who blasphemed uh, the Holy Mary. And it's like, bro, how freaking new are you, my guy? Like, like how how new how, how long have you been watching Nick Fuentes? Do you do you not think he's a Catholic Catholic? Uh, do you not think he's like a Catholic fascist? Do you not think that he's the one who made Christ as king popular? Do you not think that he's the whole reason the entire rights ring daily wire faggot? People are starting to criticize Jews. Like, what is wrong with you? Like, read the room, know your place, understand what counter signaling is. Like, like bend the knee, shut your filthy mouth, you disgusting converso. How do you feel about that? <laughs> well, I was just going to say, like, it, you, you know, I mean, essentially, um, a lot of people feel like they can just kind of be real uppity and they're like, oh, I'm going to. I'm going to, you know, at Nick when he doesn't even like know who I am. And, you know, he's just returned to Twitter. And I'm also going to add him about a heavily edited two, two, two year old clip where, you know, his intent was not even to uh, insult our, our blessed mother and stuff like that. I'm like, it, it just really, I think, reflects more on the people who are going after him mm. than than really anything that's in his heart, you know? Yeah, so I want to get your opinion on something real quick because a bunch of new fags were spamming me that I was just being, like, impious and immodest or whatever, and then I didn't delete the post until somebody from, like, a private group chat that I respect said that, like, it was off the goop, so I just deleted it just to be safe. But I want to get your opinion. I posted this, and I posted it before, like, months ago, too, but I posted this AI picture of Candace Owens, but it's not really Candace Owens, obviously. It's an AI black queen woman right i i put in the prompt like like attractive black queen speaking to america in classy dress or something like that and it made like this uh this ai picture of a black woman facing a gigantic crowd or whatever in like a giant dress with a crown or whatever and she's speaking and i thought that she was dressed modestly she was in a wedding dress that was covering her shoulders and she had a veil and it looked like she was wearing black pants or leggings underneath or at least the shadow was covering there you didn't see anything vulgar but she had a big butt like some people have a dumper why do you have to be sexually frustrated to, to and start saying that i'm being immodest i wasn't I, I was doing it to promote candace i was saying like i salute candace or whatever and i posted hail our queen of america and posted the black woman saying hi to americans or whatever so like do you think that's me being immodest and not like working towards my Catholic faith or whatever, or do you think people are piety spiraling? Piety spiraling. Well, I, I think that while we should maybe avoid posting things that might be immodest or what have you, if it wasn't immodest, I think that might be a little nitpicky. Um, kind of depending on. I mean, I don't know what the image so, was necessarily. So look, look, you um, didn't you, see, know. you didn't see like butt crack. You didn't see anything anything like that. It was basically almost like a silhouette. And she was wearing like a wedding dress and you could see it's like you could see like it was almost like her wedding dress was slightly transparent because of the lights. But it was all black underneath. It was like she was clearly wearing pants or something underneath or whatever. It was just that the outline of the like reflection thing or whatever with the lights of her of her buttocks or her dumper, uh, it was like very, um, very big. And people were basically saying that I was like horny posting or something like that which was not my intention at all. I just posted a black queen because Candace is a black queen. You know, I wasn't thinking like that because I'm not sexually frustrated like these weirdos. But I also want to know, it, should I have been more considerate of the weirdos who are sexually frustrated and need to, like, monitor everything they see? And am, am I being scandalizing, I guess is the word. Well, you know, the gooners, man, they're out of control. They just can't. They just That's can't what I'm saying. These, these, these coomers are just like like they, they can't control themselves. They can't they can't see a dumper of any sex or ethnic diversity without <laughs> going crazy. No, 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 dude, listen, it's not it's not the age of the coomer is over. It's the gooners. Oh, now. you'll have to it, inform me on the new uh, Groyper vernacular because I, I, I haven't. <laughs> Wait, do you not know what Gooner I means? I, I know. <laughs> hey, hey, okay, hey, hey, I don't want to explain hold on, hold on. it. You don't know, <laughs> you don't know what Gooner is, right? But I know what Gloiper is, so suck it. But no, I'm kidding. Go. What's what's Gooner? No, listen, I know what Gloiper is. Uh, what's, guy. I've been around. Gooner? I know you've been around the block. You got some miles under that belt. What's <laughs> what's <laughs> what? Uh... <laughs> Hey, yo. hey, what up? Uh, what, what, I just want real quick before whoever wants to speak and speak. I just want to get Pineseps final opinions on whatever he was going to say. And then whoever wants to jump in. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, a gooner is basically I, it's basically like a coomer. But um, let's just <laughs> let's just say that Come on, they're, moderate uh, your language. You know, you don't scandalize. Use your big words. <laughs> they they 
they basically have have learned how to um let's just say prolong things that's that's where i'm gonna leave it that's where i'm gonna leave it oh they're edging <laughs> okay got you that, that they... <laughs> oh edgers okay why not just call them edgers then <laughs> I don't know if it's exactly, I actually don't know what, like, necessarily the difference is, because I don't know if I want to know what the difference is, to be honest. so, So I'll use my big boy words. When you're doing naughty alone practices that God doesn't like, and you, uh, you keep prolonging it, uh, until, because you don't want to, uh, you don't want to finish, you want to feel the, uh, material hedonistic comfort that the actual activity gives you, and not the completion of that activity that's gross and God doesn't like. Um, so when you do that, uh, for an extended period of time, that's called edging. (laughs) So the more, you know, who wants to talk? (laughs) Anybody have any thoughts on edging or Catholicism or anything? (laughs) No, 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 no. (laughs) Not in the same, not in the same. Wait, right, right, about this topic. Oh, you're the the Irish Arnold Schwarzenegger voice guy. Hi. What? No, I'm not Irish. Oh, you're just, oh, you're German. You just speak like you're on slow motion. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Sh- shouldn't we like about the tone policing? Shouldn't we be more tone policing because the newer people would probably, th- they, they just join our channels and they think this is a Catholic channel and then they adapt our in-group language in their normal world. And then they basically call, they, they, they use these words like rape, and then they basically we scandalize them because they think then, because of us, it's normal. Okay, so I'll, I'll put it in words that you can understand. Um, when you're posting on Twitter and you post something that could, <laughs> when you post something on Twitter that could be scandalizing to other people, you should obviously always use moderation. But when you're speaking to an audience that is generally just other fellow groipers, we're using a common friendly vernacular. Obviously, if you're posting on Nick's post or you're retweeting stuff like that, then obviously you don't want to say, oh, I'm going to rape for you, King, or anything like that. Obviously, use some common sense. That's basically what it comes down to is just common sense. And understanding how to interact with people because X is supposedly a public square. Now it's our own personal public square with our followers because the people who follow us and whatever. So if I'm constantly pointing out Nick Fuentes stuff and I've been a Groiper for seven years, people automatically know the culture of Groiper and stuff like that. So if people are now just getting into Groiper terminology and uh, Nick Fuentes and stuff like that, then they already have the pattern recognition capabilities to understand that not everything has to be taken literal or in serious or seriousness. And it doesn't mean that we're not being modest in our faith. Right. So I would say that you just have to basically use own personal discretion and know who your followers are, know who know who your audience is. And uh, and just be smart about it. Right. Obviously, don't post anything vulgar, vulgar. And I don't I don't really post rape jokes unless, you know, I'm really in a rape mood. Uh, <laughs> but I don't post rape, ju- uh, rape jokes or whatever. But like I was just talking about social interactions. My litmus test for real for really like social interactions is uh, like if people think rape jokes are funny. If somebody that I'm talking to in a regular basis or whatever says a rape joke or whatever, then I subconsciously know that I could be more comfortable around them because they have my dark sense of humor. That's similar to what's going on with these new fags, right? Like if they're into these Nick Fuentes ideas, that's awesome. We want as many people to hear the arguments that he's making, but if they want to be a groiper, they have to adapt to the culture, just like these barbaric immigrants, like my wife, (laughs) <laughs> kidding i love my wife uh just like these t- types of people uh have to adapt to the culture right my wife did the right thing she came to america she adapted to my american culture and now she's a catholic housewife with three kids which is awesome and shows that i'm a masculine man and knows how to you know control my woman right so uh that's what i would say to use discretion understand different social act uh different social interactions it, it really annoys me actually the the whole like that like how some people get so like upset about like so-called spurgs like all oh, the spurgs uh, uh, oh the you know the, the, the who cares like it's all it's, it's all it's all just i mean w- w- there are serious points to be made but but it's all like people need to like get their head out of their their behind you know what i mean and just like it reminds me of like the things that lauren southern was saying a few weeks ago and when some people and like even I don't Finally, know, like, the millennial unmutes me. What's what's up with this big guy? I don't know who anybody is. Who who's talking right now? This is Thomas Moore. Uh oh, hey, my 
Big J, my my big uh, my big ginger <laughs> my big ginger jolly friend who is uh definitely definitely not the real one that is uh the the owner of Catholic Answers or whatever. But go on, what's up? Yeah, I I, I don't know who that <laughs> guy yeah, that guy's is. Yeah, not, not definitely with definitely not that guy. Def, definitely uh Adrian Gideon, uh, Adrian Dittman. Go on. Right, <laughs> yeah, Ad- Adrian Moore. All right, what's up, Adrian Moore? Well, I just wanted to say hi. You know, I would have appreciated a heads up. That uh, that uh, oh, this was my idea. You're, by oh, the way, yeah, right. Okay, hold on. Hey, Spec, so you should, you should do more Catholic hangouts because I miss talking to you, bro. Like we're real friends and stuff like that. Posts fifty posts of what my space is and how to do it and stuff like that. And you're in all my group chats and you don't come in until fucking twenty. Sorry, excuse my language. Until twenty minutes later, <laughs> nigga. I had work. I I was busy. So I it's my like, fault that you're a wage slave. I got it. Okay, so that's your own. That's your all own. Right, all right. All that's, right. All that's right. That's your right, own right. personal problems that it seems like you're projecting take, on me. I'll take the. I'll take the criticism. All right. I'll take all right. the criticism. So okay. So but okay. It's, so it's, besides it's, projecting your own personal, uh, you know, self-esteem issues onto me, what would you like to discuss? Wow. wow. I, I mean, I don't think we've had enough discussion about the SSPX so far. I oh, and yes, if anybody, good. please, the things I love talking about the most, more than anything, is the SSPX. And can we it, talk about the SS? We, uh, oh, we can talk about the, <laughs> we can talk about the U.S. as liberty. Uh, the, the, things I, the things I love, to, I, I only have about uh, 35 minutes left, by the way. So, um, what was I going to say? So, the things I love talking about most is um, the morality of every uh, Hitler action that he ever took. Uh, I love discussing discussing the moral uh, relevance of uh, race mixing. I love discussing whether or not I believe the earth is flat. And I really, really love when people tell me about their uh, their wives and their girlfriends and stuff like that and, like, talk about how much they love them. So please do all of those things in this space or any space in the future. Thanks, guys. Yeah, I think I think we need to bring uh, James Rossiter in here so we can talk about Nick watching Euphoria three years ago. Oh yes, James Rossiter. That the the that guy is just socially inept. Uh, he has he's the he's the he's the eternal he's the eternal new fag. He's been around for like five years, right, in various different Catholic and Groyper chats, doing the same exact thing that we do. We need to be nicer to the woman, right? What we were just talking about. He has, he cannot read the room. He has no social fortitude or aptitude, whatever the word is. I know big words because I speak like a smart person. And uh, I don't know. I just I feel like he's um uh he's just eternally meant to be a, a terminal normie. And he's never going to get it. It's never going to click for him. And he, and he kissed a man six years ago at a pride parade on the lips. I. I don't have confirmation of that yet, but I mean, I saw the yeah, I saw, I saw, I saw the leaks. I, 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 you know, I'm tuned in. I'm tuned in a little bit. I, I've seen the leaks. Don't worry. Uh, but uh, yeah, I don't. I don't. Know. Sorry, Specs. May I just chime in there? If that's okay. Two seconds. Is this a real accent, or are you doing an impression? <laughs> in two seconds. Yeah, we got. No, one no, I. <laughs> being British, this is uh, oh, this is on. Max. You're, real, you're, real, you're really British. Yes, British. Oh yes. my god, I'm so so I'm so sorry. sorry. I just, before you start, before you start, I just want to say that I still love you despite your uh, you know your, your disability. Um, but uh, <laughs> but, but, but hey, go on. I just I, I can't say the word chime in anymore because it'll get probably get memed. But um, <laughs> uh, actually, I mentioned about uh, night. go on. <laughs> <laughs> mentioned about Thomas More in that um, the actually as in the original Thomas More, yeah, not I, the I know, uh, he's a nice guy. I like that. Jesus. Um, there's, I'm not sure if any of you guys have read Thomas More's, um, Defense of the Seven Sacraments written for Henry VIII by any chance. I'm sure that Pinesap has because he's read literally every Catholic book in uh, existence and stored them into his robot Catholic brain. So if maybe he wants to chime in. I'm a bit familiar with it, but I actually have not, uh, had the pleasure of reading through the book. Have Take Sap. Take Sap. Well, fortunately, Take I have, I have a copy Sap. that was printed like back in like 1902. Which, so it's very like even though it's translated into English, it's got it's um Latin and English, and it's it's probably I would say probably one of the best refutations of Luther's doctrines, should we say, um in English, and it's it's definitely worth getting a copy of it if you can find it because it's 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 good in the same way that Francis uh, I think it's De Sales' uh, treatise, I'm not quite sure what it's called, his book against the Protestants. This is a yes. That's the one. Yes. Yes. Uh, well, I know Thomas More is uh, one of my favorite saints because he was literally martyred for sticking up for his faith, and he and he also didn't want to his uh, daughter to marry a disgusting Protestant, which I can heavily relate Thank to. You, Spexo. And, uh, Thank you, Spexo. This is one of one of my confirmation. What? But Thomas More was Thomas More wasn't just a brilliant, you know, what? Catholic thinker writer. He was a brilliant lawyer as well, and his defense at his trial was. 
epic to say the least. I'm not sure how much yeah. you know about it, but he there's he got truly a, 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 a master of master of his craft. I watched the movie. Uh, yeah. yeah, I was going to say. There's that. a movie. There's- have you seen? Uh, I'm not quite sure if you Americans have seen it, but in the UK we have uh, a series called Wolf Hall. Uh, no, that sounds like British nonsense. I've not heard it. Is it BBC or something like that? Of course, you guys would have a name like the BBC. That's hilarious. <laughs> It is, it is BBC, but unlike most of the drivel that BBC puts out, Wolf Hall is actually really, at least the first series, is really good, authentic, you know, good costumes, good dialogue, etc. But Anton Lesser plays Thomas More very well, I would say, truly captures the spirit of the man. I mean, I've read a couple of different biographies of, of Thomas More. Yeah, I like And it's just, I like, I like it, it's a great, I like, he's almost like a, like a, I want to say modern, I mean, you know, for the Tudor period, a modern stoic, like he's very stoic in what he's facing. And it takes a lot of courage to go through what he did. So it really exemplifies that sense of Christian virtue going through adversity, if you know what I mean. Yeah. And, and Thomas More's big thing, you know, I mean, I only have him in my name, but Thomas More's big thing was, you know, rule of law and order. And um, if you watch the movie Man for All Seasons, they really get that well, you know, there's, oh, that's a good there's film, a scene where he's talking to his his uh, son-in-law, right? I think it's Roper, and, uh, and uh, yes, he's yeah, he's talking about like because um, his son was a very passionate Catholic, and he's like, well, we need to overthrow the king, we need to do this, did we, did we lose that. him? It's like, or it's uh, not just me. Thomas More's like, you overthrow law, you overthrow order. You know, we need to have order. That's why. Well, the, that's why I, I, I rally against these people who are like, we need to have this revolution and save the Aryan race with guns and stuff. It's like, no, you got to do it civilly. You know, I don't want people to get killed. I don't want people to die. You know, you've got to be reasonable. You got to have order. You got to have law. No, you know? Of course, I, tell, I mean, more was, was not an advocate of chaos. How do I tell? So, okay, this is my first space. So, I need to remove. I can only have ten speakers. Is that correct? All right, so I don't know everybody's name, so uh, I'm just going to start removing people from speaking lists. No, Spexo, no. Uh, I don't know who's who. Okay, so Mr. Mr. No. Wright is my dad. Jihadi Groiper, is that any of you? No? Okay, who's speaking right now? Who are the speakers so I know not to, to kick them? I'm Thomas. I'm still the Roman. Thomas, I have my PFP, I think. Oh, Thomas Moore. I am okay. I am Lego Morpheus. Remove from speakers. Yes, remove. Sula the Roman. Uh, remove. That, is that a good person? I'm I'm son of the Roman, even though I'm British. Oh yeah, that's uh, Stol- Stolen, Stolen Valley. Valley. <laughs> Stolen Valley. Stolen moment. Valley. Stolen Valley. <laughs> yeah, sick. All right. Well, my you'll, ancestors you'll, are Italian, yeah, so at, uh, at, at, technically it's not. Yeah, you'll be you'll be sentenced at the new Nur- Nuremberg trials. Uh, okay, um, Lord Charles Thomas. <laughs> that 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 is uh, me. Friendly clips. No. Yeah. Okay. I'm removing you from speaker person. Oh, no, he's speaking spec. So oh, no. Snap. <laughs> Noodles. Hey, that's me. Hi, Noodles. Okay, so how many speakers do I have now? I have seven speakers. Okay, so I don't really know how this works. So do a, uh, I don't know, do a, I saw, do a request. I, I don't Mike know how this works. Here. Request to speak, I guess, and hopefully I'll be able to see you. All right, go on, continue. I saw Mike was in here. I don't know if he's... So going uh, back to what um, you, Thomas More, was saying, Thomas, the, the Thomas More was certainly not a revolutionary. I mean, Divine Right of Kings stated that Henry VIII was... Yeah, he was, the, he was by God's rule. Right. But Henry VIII wasn't, wasn't in a sense, at least in the early days, he wasn't a Protestant. Yeah. He made himself head of what he would call the Catholic Church in England. But doctrinally, in the early days at least, Henry VIII was a devout Catholic. He hated yes. Luther all his life. So, he was just a simp, yeah. yeah, going back to what you're saying about Thomas More, you certainly would not, would not have supported, well, what Cromwell, Oliver Cromwell would have done couple of hundred years later in the 1640s Oliver Cromwell. yeah and I, I, you, you look at oliver cromwell by the way i mean a lot of a lot of protestants try to tout him as this kind of like based anglo-saxon nationalist you look at what he did um the jews had not been in england since edward longshanks so for like several centuries mm. there had not been one jew in oh england. so there was peace for decades. cromwell cromwell the, the like first puritan guy in charge of england comes in and he just opens the floodgates and all the Jews come in from like Holland and from uh, the Holy Roman Empire and whatnot. It's, you know, it's a little suspicious. And then he bans Christmas. And he discriminates against not even just Catholics, but like Protestants who are like uh, of the wrong kind of Protestant. But he lets the Jews in who aren't even Trinitarians, who don't believe in Jesus Christ at all. It's a little suspicious. What's his name? Longshank? 
Edward, Edward Longshanks. Edward, Edward the first. Edward, Edward the first. Edward Edward Longshanks. Longshanks. All right, so he was probably Jewish because Longshank, Long Nose. I'll try. I'll try no, to use. No, 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 no. He was good. He was good. He was Catholic. He kicked them out. He kicked them out. Oh, Longshank is good. So Longshank actually has a small nose. Longshank's the bad guy. Longshanks was a devout, devout Catholic crusader king who was loyal to his wife in the period of rampant adultery. Right, that's... And Spex, Spex, uh, Spex, uh, you, you'll like this. Longshanks just means tall. Ooh, I, I like tall people. people. Nobody's taller than me. Yeah, he was um, tall. If, if, yeah. If, you're, if you're unfamiliar with Longshanks as well, uh, he's the Braveheart bad guy. So. Oh, yeah, he's a... Oh, okay, now I remember. Okay, I was about yep. to say, if nobody said it, I was going All right, to. good. My, uh, my, head, my word association head camera's working. Okay, I got you now. I, I'm, I'm, pu- I'm picking yeah. up what you're putting down. Uh, yeah, you got to connect it to a Mel Gibson character. Yeah, yeah, just, just, yeah, anytime you want me to know anything about historically, just connect it to like an obscure, weird fact that I could word associate with, and I'll, I'll get what you're putting down. Um, was, Speaking of Longshanks no, in the Braveheart that, film, even though... Okay. Sorry? Uh, yeah, so uh, what I was going to say is that I like Thomas More not just because of his zealous faith and the fact that he was a martyr and the fact that he refused to allow his uh, daughter to marry a Protestant. The uh, reason I like uh, him is because he was such a minority in his country and while everybody else and obviously this goes hand in hand with being a martyr being willing to obviously die for your faith but i feel that what's his name uh thomas moore was uh like so impassioned that he enacted catholicism in every part of his life he was a lawyer he was a writer he was a father he was a husband he was all of these different things but yet in every single aspect of his life he was a catholic he 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 every and he was open he was rigorously honest and he didn't care what uh, like um, consequences that rigorous honestly brought to him. And that's something. And it, uh, it's an example for us to follow in today's age, because, you know, like, like you were saying, in his age, the popular thing was to become Protestant. That's how you had favor with the government. That's how you had favor as a businessman. Yeah. If you were a Catholic, like you had serious fines placed against and you. That makes you. And I think eventually Catholics couldn't even hold office, right? Catholics couldn't be in politics. Catholics couldn't do anything, you know, and this guy was a lawyer, which is very important. Like, um, it wasn't until the Catholic, I think it was the Catholic Emancipation Act in 1837 or 47. Uh, what, until that time in England, Catholics were basically barred from public office or public positions of power of any type. So basically, yeah, I, oh, I need somebody to raise me on something real quick because uh, I don't I don't know anything about it because I, I wasn't following it. But the uh, the Angel Studios movie Cabrini is that good or bad? I, I saw a lot of people saying it was feminist propaganda. Bad. I, I don't know. Bad. You know the, very bad. Uh, Concept says bad. It's bad. Why is it bad? So it's bad because they completely try to basically depict Saint Francis, uh, Saint Francis Cabrini as like a feminist and they totally downplay her Catholicism. They kind of create this like animosity or tension between her and the church as if like the church is sexist or wrong or whatever. And the, what's the church is, is sexist and it's right. Go on. <laughs> Real. Um, but if you read her letters, like, she is just this fiery Italian, like passionate saint. Like she, she, her far, uh, or her, her heart was on fire for God. You know, like, I, I mean, and everything. I mean, I mean, she literally had a quote where she's like, "I won't rest till every Protestant child is baptized in the Catholic Church." Mm-hmm. I mean, she was this amazing saint. She had this complete uh, uh, submissiveness and docility towards Almighty God. She loved our lady so much i mean she she was just this amazing saint and i have a great devotion to her she's one of the reasons i became catholic and to see angel studios this protestant mormon studio completely like butcher her story to make her into some like girl boss or whatever is totally inaccurate to her story you know who is shilling for it you know that like midget guy real big nick on instagram who calls the catholic church like babylon uh he was shilling for it and I don't know how that happened. I don't know who paid him to show for like a movie about a Catholic saint, but he was showing. Oh, whoops. Hold on. Wait a second. Hold on. I muted everybody by accident. Oh my goodness. I'm such a millennial. Okay. Hold on. Uh, boomer. Oh my fucking boomer. Oh, how are you speaking still? Oh no. It w- uh, oh, it works. Okay. Never mind. I'm good. Okay. I think we're good. Everybody unmute. Okay. Everybody who's a speaker can unmute themselves. Okay. Thomas, unmute yourself and then go. No. Unmute everyone. Nope. How about now? There. Okay, we're good. Yes. Can you hear me? It works. It works. I think. I I don't know if people can. Okay, it works now. I just got. Because I wanted to speak earlier, but. Oh, Mike. Um, Hey, he's black. Mike Mike is here. Hey, Mike. Let me just say something about Mike AF. Mike AF won first of all. 
All right. Yeah. Real. And uh, Real. He, he was always counter signaling. Uh, see, this is another aspect of it, too. Some people sometimes Voipers like will counter signal people that like like we think are cool sometimes or whatever. And we got to like reel them in. But then in the long run, they end up being right. And then you can learn from like your mistakes on how to how to react. But Mike Van, like he always had great instinctual capabilities because he's loyal and because he ha he sees the loyalty instinctually, I think, in other people. He just has to moderate his aggression, I think. Mike, that's, has, that's Mike has never been wrong ever. I'll I got that. Do yeah, exactly. I got that dog in me. And also, yeah, people like Gideon Lazar. Um, what's, 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 what's I'm so disappointed in him. Yeah, literally, it's like, dude, it's like, you can, it's like, I don't get what's with these people, like, they think that, you know, they think that just because they have a little bit of clout as a Catholic apologist, they can hop into the political realm, it's like, it's like, stay in your lane, no. it's like, stay in your lane, or just like, like, you know, the best Man, thing I, I just, I don't understand. Hold what, on, guys, what, one second, let me, people. let me, let me pause you real quick. Uh, yeah, no. Uh, let me just hold on, uh, Dad. Dad, uh, unmute your mic. I have added you as a speaker. Unmute your mic. It should say "mic is on" or something. Sorry. I'm... All right, you continue speaking, and then when he starts talking, just like say hello. Yeah. No, but it's, honestly, there's kind of like this thing Tyler was talking about earlier in his stream about there pe there be people on Twitter especially who would be like new fag goikers and they would be like counter signaling clippers and old heads and old heads and whatever and he was just basically saying like you know a lot of these like people don't lurk and they just think they can counter signal old heads you know, but it's you like know you gotta lurk nick said this a couple weeks ago on his stream and it's very poignant you know like pines out by edge hold on nobody... hold on pines out by edge as a co-host just try to monitor people raising their hand if they want to speak i don't know how twitter spaces work i'm going to add uh where's thomas Moore? Thomas Moore, I'm here. I'm, I'm going to add uh, you as a, a co-host uh, as as well. In fact, so I have no, I have no fucking clue. How this oh, works. awesome. Uh, Mike Van, maybe if anybody has any Twitter space uh, a knowledge, please help. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing, but go on. Good question. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, uh, what I was saying, Nick, Nick, Nick talked about this on stream like a couple weeks ago. I think it's like, like you know, when you you come home and your parents just tell Hi, Dad. you, like, I do see you this, speaking, Dad. That. Dad. What? Hi. Hi. <laughs> Pexo Sr., he's here? Yeah. Dude, let's go. Let's Pexo go. Sr. Welcome, welcome. Here. The legend. Can you tell us any uh, embarrassing stories about Spexo? Dad, what what's going on? What, can you can you talk now? Yes, I don't know what you guys are talking about. You know, I, I appreciate listening to all you guys. They want to talk to you. They want to talk to you. They want to ask you questions. All right, go ahead. Pine sap. Talk to my dad. Oh my goodness. What? So, so read the room. Social etiquette. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, Spexo senior, it's good to talk to you, sir. I, I, uh, you know, I, I, I think you've raised a good son and stuff like that. And you've clearly, uh, impressed upon him, like a lot of good values and morals and stuff like that. And I, I just want to say it's an honor to speak to you. You too. I've been listening to you when you do carry you and carry do that stuff. On <laughs> okay, this, um, one second. Hi, yeah, I, thank you for doxing me immediately. <laughs> thank you for he thank you. Slave thank you for doxing me immediately. Do not use my personal name. My name is Spexo. Thank you so much for doing that. Go ahead. <laughs> Dad, you can go. You can you can yes, talk. Spexo? That. Yes, Spexo. Thank you. Oh, what I, do? I, I said I said the wrong name. Okay, I expect that. Yeah, when you and Spexo are doing you know do your do your stuff, I think it's I think you're very um intelligent and um. The main thing that attracts me to all you guys and with Nick, and my son's doing it real good lately, it makes me proud of him, is that when you talk, you know what you're talking about. You know what I mean? I'm good at talking about stuff that I don't know what to talk about, and I think you younger guys are lucky that um, you do the research and you, and you learn, you, you know, especially um, Pine Sap, you know, you, you go right to the source and, and you, you know, and you, um, whatever you do, you tune people right up. Oh, I, I I appreciate that. Yeah, I I try my best. So, you know, it doesn't mean that I'm I'm perfect with it by any means, but that really means a lot to me. Like, it, you know, it, it really has been just a, a labor of love trying to, you know, help everyone out and uh, you know, help us all kind of just be more Catholic. You know, better followers of Christ every single day. And and I think that as long as we continue to do that, like that's that's really what makes this whole movement thrive. Because like. For the longest time, I mean, in like conservative politics, I got so tired of it, of kind of the 
antics of like, oh, well, you know, faith's important, faith's good, but we're going to like place it on the side, right? We're going to keep it on the side. We're going to keep it as something distant. And it's like, that's not how it should be. It's like, it should be how we live. It should be how we operate. It should be how we think about ca- like politics in its totality. And I think to see so many uh, guys in our movement and stuff like that just become these like great saints and stuff like that and these great men and, you know, seeing the kind of influence that they have on their communities has been probably honestly worth its weight in gold to me. I, I've really, really come to love it and appreciate it very much. So th- thank you for the kind words, sir. I appreciate it. This is where you talk now, Dad. Oh, I'm supposed to talk now? All right. What? <laughs> no. That's yeah, cool. when, yeah, usually no. sometimes, like, it, I, you've taught me this when I was a kid, maybe you forgot. When people talk to you, you, you also talk back. So go on. Hey, hey, don't let Spexo boss you around. Don't let Spexo <laughs> boss you around. No, he, he's just trying to be cool. That's all right. You know, we, we, <laughs> it's self-esteem is just brought on to me by childhood trauma, so. <laughs> That's right. Yes. <laughs> yes. As a father, you get used to those sorts of things. Yes. Uh, so, so go ahead. People talk to my dad or dad talk. Like, it's a conversation. It's an open forum. Get to know each other. Like, geez, Louise, guys. Yeah. Man, so we need hey, static in here. I will. We need uh, static, static to say the exact sentence I just said. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm, 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 I guess, considered an old head because I'm almost 40. So, Ew. um, but, uh, me? Yeah, no, I was saying ill at yeah. your disgusting, uh, ill at your disgusting age, but go on. Yes, yes, but I do have, uh, I am a traditional Catholic. I have 10 kids, large family. Um, and yeah, I'm happy to, uh, you know, share my knowledge, experience and, and, uh, raising up my kids in the, in the faith. Uh, Based. my 15 year old is, is a huge Nick fan and let's go. And in the last. He like all his like worlds have combined because he was a huge Yay fan yes. and a Tate fan. So now he's just like, oh my gosh, Nick Tate Yay, all oh, converging bro. together. I keep saying it, bro. <laughs> Hitler sequel man is real. Like people don't want to believe bro. Hitler speaker man is real. All right, like just accept it now, Dad. Uh, what? Do you, yeah. Why don't you tell them about your your upbringing a little bit in in like vague details? You don't have to use people's government names. Sorry, sorry to interrupt, but just before he does, uh, I'm gonna just gonna just to say I'm just gonna drop out. But uh, it was good talking, lads. Uh, have a good one, and uh, God bless you okay, all. Okay, I love you. Condense your goodbyes next time. Bye, Mr. Wright. <laughs> I have a question for Spexo Senior, if that's okay. No, Dad. No, Dad. People are talking. Dad. To you're Spexo Senior. I'm with, I'm with Mr. You, Spexo yeah. Senior. I'm a dad to a one-year-old son. Can you give me like the top three tips? For raising a boy, he's my first kid. Well, I like you got it. No, I don't. I'm not an expert, but I, you know, when um, when Kerry was born, and it was, you know, <laughs> little turmoil, turmoil in my life. Um, I had to make sure that he was number one. I had to learn how to make decisions that, because when you make decisions in life, they affect everybody. And um, bringing this kid into my life, I need, I, I had to make sure that um. I kept trying always to make the right decisions and put his well-being first, you know, and then everything else fell into place. I believe it. Honestly, it it is like you really don't need. He's very he's very good at simplifying. It so far, things. it seems like I, I I overanalyze things. My dad is very good at simplifying. Like the, the Meg, so I I like it. I got I gotta ask you a question. Does it hurt when you get dead named? What? <laughs> yeah, I don't know why, why they keep dead naming me. My dad is always dead naming me, and like I've told that he he won't accept my identity. And like, that's really causing trauma to me. That's probably going to affect me in the future where my dad didn't accept me because of who I really am. And like, you know, you know, understand it though. I you know we always have grown. I had us. a moment. I had a moment when I was choosing the PFP where I was going to choose the, uh, true inspexo. <laughs> you know, you know the one. <laughs> well, go, on, uh, go ahead. Ask my dad other questions. This is fun. I have, oh, can, can I ask way, I'm, ending this, I'm ending this stream in 13 minutes at 3.30 um, uh, human time. No. Yes. All right. I have to end it in 12 minutes. We'll do more. I'm going to try and do more of these. This is fun. But I want, uh, I want you guys uh, to spend the next 13 minutes talking to my dad. So, could I ask so, a question of, uh, Spexo uh, Senior? Sure. Excellent. I was curious. So I know not to get into the details, but Spexo Junior kind of had a, a falling away from the faith, was kind of on a bad path for a while, self admittedly. I have a brother who's in a similar circumstance and, uh, you know, just curious 
you know, what, what should I be doing outside of prayer? You know, what was that like for you? Any advice? Well, just to be, to be vague, but I have an idea what you're talking about. You know, um, you know, of course we got to pray all the time, but you know, I just, ha- I had to be there to him to, for, to, um, how can I say for a certain extent, but I wouldn't let his insanity come into my, make my, me insane. You know what I mean? I had to draw some boundaries, you know what I mean? But you know, I, I always showed him I loved him, I guess I would think, you know, but, um, you know, some of that stuff is really hard. People are really hard, but, um, you know, um, I think we're more fortunate because we talk about it. We try to get more ideas. You know, um, I really can't like um, tell you too much because I don't know who I'm talking to and exactly what I'm talking about. But in general, he's talking about, he's you know, talking about drug addiction. They all know that you help drug addicts. You could, you could talk about how. No, you help- I know that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. No, okay. You tell me to be, don't be giving no, no, no. Okay. Listen, don't give, don't give personal, don't give personal information like names or yep. names or locations. Right. Anonymity. Okay. Anonymity. The, the principle you told me. All right. Anonymity. I'm, wor- I'm working on it. You know, when people use drugs, unfortunately, they get into a mindset that they think everything is everyone else's fault. And they're right. You know, and um, as long as you don't finance this insanity and, you know, you know, th- th- there's places out there that you can go for help. Even if you get the literature from them places, anything you could do to get them to go there. You know what I mean? And um. Or just be in a position if he lives through it when he hits a bottom that you have a place for him, you know? I don't know. Did he ever go to treatment or anything before? No, no. So I'll just give a little bit of background. So the, this, my brother basically has a lot of like health issues that, uh, he had to use, like had to use prescription drugs for and other things. And now he's pretty much just using those drugs despite like, you know, all of that stuff. And he, he doesn't think he has a problem really. Uh, or at least he won't admit to having a problem, not to me. And it's, you know, he's got one kid already and he's got another one on the way. And it's, uh, you know, it's just kind of a tough thing. Oh, it's, de- it's definitely a tough thing because what happens with addicts is that, um, we want to justify our using. So we say, Oh, it's a prescription. You're not a doctor, but you know, that's why, you know, if you get, I don't know how you would approach it, but you know, to tell me, you know, there has to be some unmanageability in his life. He has to be, you know, he, he has to be messing things up sooner or later and, um, or just attitude and behavior. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. Yeah, that's, that's true. It's just, sometimes is, people, is there, sometimes, is there a better way to confront somebody like that? Sorry to take up so much time, by the way. I'm just curious. No, it's all right, man. No, you know, the, the, you know, when you know the person, you know how to confront them a little bit, but you know, Basically, you want to keep them close, but you don't want them to hurt you. And, you know, and, you know, you know, you know, I had people had to tell me, look, you have a son. You got to stop doing what you're doing, you know, and, um, and, you know, and, and literature, you know, if you get some literature and you talk, you know, I would talk when I help people sometimes we're all at a diner. I will be acting like I'm talking about somebody else, but I'm talking about them sitting there and hopefully they'll identify and learn something. That's exactly what I do at my, uh, at my job with this kid that uh, I'm, I was really close friends with and something's going on in his life or whatever. Like I talk to other people in front of him trying to drop subliminal seeds in them to like, hopefully that like something they catch on to something and something clicks or whatever. So that's another thing that I picked up from my dad. And what my dad is talking about is setting boundaries to people that don't live the lifestyle you want. Like we li- we live a Catholic lifestyle and if we, it's just similar to it's parallel to the drug addiction and stuff like that. Like I, have a certain conviction and way that I want to live my life and how I treat my family. So I'm not going to associate with people who are telling their children that it's okay to be gay or something like that. Right. And if, yeah. if my wife or if somebody in my family was going to tell me that like, Oh, I want to have a, an abortion or I want to do gay stuff or whatever. I'd be like, um, you know, my, you know, my feelings, you know, I love you or whatever, but I can't be around you and I can't have you in your life until you're ready to change the way you're living because I can't be around that stuff because it's not good for my spirit and my, my well being, you know? So I will love you and I'll help you as much as I can if you ever need me, but I'm not going to, uh, basically support and condone your insanity and your degeneracy that the life that you're living, I can't do that. I can't do that. I'm sorry. You know, like, and yeah. hopefully that, that they'll, they'll, they'll understand or whatever. And they'll know that you're coming from a place of love. If you have a history of relationship as close as your brother, I'm assuming you do. So I think that you really have to sit down and talk to him and he might not hear you right away. And he might not seem like anything is catching on or whatever, but you never know what things that you say to people are going to catch on later down the road. So you might talk to your brother in a loving, kind Christian way. 
and he might reject you and he might hate you at the moment, but maybe something he'll go through an experience. And when that experience happens, something will click in his mind and he'll be like, oh, wait, this is what my brother was talking about. I'm, I'm, I'm not uh, financially stable because of my drug addiction. I'm not taking these pills anymore because, uh, because, it's, because I need them for pain. I'm taking them because I'm trying to mask feelings with substances or I want to mute my, my normal consciousness, you know? So maybe things like that, when you say words like that, will click in his brain down the road. And when he's finally willing to do the work and put the effort in to actually change his life and get that help, perhaps he'll then thank you. But either way, all you have to do is focus on yourself, pray for him, live uh, according to your principles that you're trying to push on to him. And, you know, hopefully God, God will take care of the rest. Right. Everything else. You know, my, my, yeah. my priest called it planting the seed. Right. Like you just have that little bit of witness of the faith of them. Right. Like 100%. that little example of Christianity. That one. Dad, what did you always tell me? me? What did you always tell me about looking into your kid's eyes? You ever want to look for God? You're looking through your kids' eyes. Yep, so, so, oh, yeah, that's, 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 uh, that's really good. That's so I, true. I, I appreciate that. And uh, b- before I hop off here, I just wanted to gloat a little bit about your son, make you feel good. Uh, your son brought me into the faith. Uh, he bullied me when I was a, a filthy Protestant <laughs> and a degenerate and uh, opened me up to Catholicism. And him and Pine Sap both uh, opened me up, and now I'm, I'm uh, applying to seminary. So your son is what? a, a Yo, great are you man. Serious? You're going to become a uh, priest? Yeah, I'm working on it. I, you know, they haven't accepted me, so, but that's the plan. Yeah, let me translate that to boomer language. Uh, God worked through through him. I mean, I'm sorry. God worked through me, and he saw how I was living, and that that planted a, an emotional seed or something, along with the culmination of other people in the Groiper movement. And now he has found his vocation, and what he's going to do is he's going to become a priest. That's crazy. That's awesome. That's great. Well, that's all glory to Jesus Christ. I didn't, be listen, proud listen, of your guys, son. Be very proud of your guys, son. Guys, I didn't do anything. Pine Sap didn't do anything. Nobody did anything. God worked through us to bring you guys to him. We did not do anything ourselves. So true. Five, so, more, so five true. more minutes. Let's go. Speed run. Speed run. I'll go ahead. Christus. What? No questions? I'll I go think ahead. someone had a question. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and say some stuff. Let's do it. All right, well, first of all, Specs, I just wanted to say I love what you're doing with the, the thought posting. Super inspirational. I, uh, you know, don't want to age docs or anything, but I'm, yeah, dude, it's, it's great. Um, I don't want to like age docs or anything, of course, but I'm only like a couple of years younger than you. And like, you know, over the years, I've gotten a lot of parallels. Like, you know, I had a, I had a pretty rough family life when I was young, like divorce and like domestic violence and stuff. And then when I went to college, I thought it was great. Like, you know, I could just indulge in all the things that I wanted to like numb myself with. Mm-hmm. And then like, once I got so low, you know, I, I had a bit of a spiritual awakening and my life is like completely different now. Of course, like, you know, I found Nick in 2018, you know, watching the super chatters. He's the same now as he was then, you know, just hating on him and stuff. Um, all with love, of course. But, um, yeah, you know, I, I had a real problem with drugs. Like I did Xanax and LSD and stuff. Um, but then when I dropped all that, I, uh, you know, came back to the Catholic faith, of course. And, uh, you know, I, uh, over the last couple of years, I've actually evangelized a few people. I, I have three people under me in just two years for, for the Catholic faith. And I actually just got engaged this past Easter. And like, it's crazy when you look back at, you know, this stuff and like where you are now and like through the, through the faith and through the, like, you know, the America first message, it's like my I would, I would not be able to recognize myself in the past to where I am now. And it's like, just, of course, thanks be to God and everything. So love everything all the Groypers are doing. And I just love the movement and I can't wait to meet everyone at FPAC. So yeah, yeah right. you guys so I, I just like, wanted to say have the word associate and say that like you spoke on my first Catholic hangout or something. Cause I'm not going to know who anybody is. Cause so, uh, Thomas Moore, are you going to FPAC? No, not this you, year. I can't get the time off of work. Piece of- Okay, that sucks. Um, it's a, it's okay. It's okay. You'll see me next. No, I can year. see your see your next orange year. beard from a mile away, so it's okay. Yeah. Your jolly orange beard. <laughs> but but Spex, so I just wanted to say I really appreciated you being real with us because I mean it kind of it, it, this this is kind of like a, a masculine thing like oh it's it's gay to be open about my thoughts and like talk to people but it's like you know it's really valuable because you don't know what kind of experiences people have in their lives and they relate to that and they hear that and they see. Oh, well, this person's going through it and they made it through that. Maybe it's not so bad. Exactly. You know? 100%. So, like, and it, 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 and it really just trans, like, once you actually open up to at least a small group of people, it really transcends to, it gets, it makes you get to know yourself and it transcends, uh, like, 
all aspects of your life. It's not just on Twitter. It's how you talk to people, how you treat your family, all this stuff. That's what's so special about this movement is that it's a bunch of friends learning about each other, learning about themselves, learning about the world and trying to influence a positive change, you know, and that's amazing. Yeah, we just have to be more real with each other. Like we have to, you know, like, like, I, I'm not saying we shouldn't be joking. We shouldn't have irony or anything, but it's just, it's just so nice when people can yeah, talk, I, talk about their I, issues. I, like, yeah, you word, know? layer your sentiment with a uh, groiper irony. Yeah, kill yourself. Yeah, go. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I was, I was also... No, you can kill me after confession, though. God, what? <laughs> I, I was just going to say, not to bring the mood down, um, but I remember when Frankie died, uh, you know, even more based. Mm -hmm. God, oh, my God gosh. Rest yeah. Cool. Oh, rest in peace. Uh, everybody, I'm going to say a quick uh, Hail Mary for uh, even more based. In the name of the Father, that, that and the Son, good. and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. So, yeah, he was a great guy. Uh, he had a beautiful voice, and he had a lot of the right ideas. Unfortunately, I guess he had some struggles that he wasn't open with, and uh, that all really correlates with just the, the, I guess, the theme of this is openness and understanding the influence you have on people. And uh, I got to go now, but I just want to I, I want to say that I love all of you guys. I love this movement. I truly think that it's going to be a world changing sensation. I really literally think that like Nick Fuentes is going to be dictator or somebody along those lines or Baron Trump or Candace Owens. Someone that is now in Candace uh, that is now in Nick Fuentes uh, immediate circle is eventually going to probably be uh, king or dictator or something of America, unless the Jews nuke us before then. But let's hope that doesn't happen. Uh, I would also want to say that uh, I love my dad more than anything in the world. He's been my best friend growing up and to anybody who has children, like always, uh, always try to, this is what I learned as a, as a dad now, always try to understand that your kids are not oblivious. Your kids are picking up on everything you say, everything you do, every action you take. If you want your kids to be Catholic, you have to be Catholic. You have to teach them to pray the rosary. You have to do all the stuff that you might think should be ubiquitous, big word time to most Catholics or whatever, but you got to really explain things to your children in an easy way, right? Just like we're explaining to new fags about Groyper vernacular and they will catch on. Okay. It's a slow process. So be patient, be kind, be loving, always have Christ in your heart, love your family, always tell your friends and your family that you love them. Don't be embarrassed of sentiment. Just know how to regulate yourself. I love all of you. And I hope we do this again soon. I love you, dad. Bye guys. God bless you, Specs. So, thank you. God bless. God bless. What does ubiquitous mean? Shut up, Alex. <laughs>